Welcome to this CLAM tutorial video. CLAM is software to turn your command line application into a fully fledged web service as well as a web interface for human end users. So when you have made something that runs on the command line, you can in this way quickly deploy it on the web for connectivity with end users or uh, automated clients. In this video we are going to make a, an application that takes a text as input and simply removes all the vowels. We can do such a task with this, the Unix application set. Um, I'm going to show you here how we can do this. We do a substitute command and we grab all vowels e -O -Q, and we remove it. Oh, I forgot a slash. Okay, now if I for example it, it type hello world you see this is removed. So this is going to be the core of our tool and this is what we're going to wrap uh, in CLAM and make it into a RESTful web service. So the first step is to actually install CLAM. We are going to make use of a Python virtual environment to do this. Um, the, a Python virtual environment can be created using the virtual env command. You may not have it on your system yet. Then you can install it as follows if you are on a Debian or Ubuntu based system. If you are on another system you can usually do something like uh, we are going to use Python 3 by the way so we add the 3 there. Oh, I think it is like this. This is the installation you can use for most other systems. Try the normal pip instead if you don't have pip 3. Um, in this case I already have this installed so I just I'm going to create a virtual environment in which we can install CLAM. We are going to use Python 3 as I said and I'm going to name the environment CLAM tutorial. Okay, the environment is made, then you activate it as follows. And now we are in our virtual environment. As you can see, the prompt has changed and shows the name of the virtual environment. Now installing CLAM is as easy as pip install CLAM. Um, this installs everything. All dependencies will be automatically downloaded and CLAM will be installed. We can verify that it is, that it is installed by loading the Python interpreter and importing CLAM. And as you see, everything works fine. You can step, skip the installation of the virtual environment if you already have CLAM installed globally. Um, now the installation is done, we are going to create our vowel eater project. And that is always done with the CLAM new project command. And if you see the options here, we provided a little system ID and the rest we can do later. So we say clam new project and the ID of our project vowel eater. Now clam has created our project. As you see it has made a project directory. It has printed out all kinds of instructions uh, for uh, building our web service. To develop our web service we first have to edit our service configuration file and then we have to edit our system wrapper script. The system configuration file contains a description of the input and output that your system expects. It determines what users can upload and what output is then expected on the basis of what input. The wrapper script is the script that CLAM will call and the wrapper script is the script that calls your actual application. In our case it will invoke set to do the actual removal of the vowels. The rest of the instructions we will get into later and all these instructions can always be read again in the instructions file. So everything has been set up in a vowel eater directory and here you see all kinds of templates that have been pre-generated by the system. So now we start by editing our system configuration file which is called vowel eater.py. It is a Python uh, script but they're not, there's not really a necessity to really know lots of Python. Okay, here we see the service configuration file. It is heavily commented. 
so we can basically follow the instructions in here. So let's take a look. System ID, vowel eater. System name, let's give it a nice name, vowel eater. System description, this tool removes all vowels from text input. Okay, and now here the configuration in the service configuration file is on a per host basis. So here we enter the host name of our system. This will be different for your system. My host happens to be called Misa, which is a reference to Game of Thrones for those who know it. Then we set the path where Clem will store all its projects. Well, this path will do for now. We set the port on which the development server will run. The host has to be configured here as well. And we can go on. Authentication and security. Normally in a Clam web service you want to set uh, user accounts. In this little example we are not going to do so. You can also set constraints so the system will not run when there is not enough memory available or when the system load is too high. I will set this to a higher value here so it doesn't complain because my computer is always running stuff in the background. It can check di whether there is enough disk space available and if that's not the case then the web service will not start. These are all constraints to ensure that the web service can run uninterrupted. All these sections we can skip for now and we go to the most important part which is the profile definition. The profile defines what goes into your uh, system and what comes out of the system. Things that go into your system are defined using input templates and the things that come out of your system based on these input templates are the output templates. So in our case we are going to have a plain text input and plain text output. So we have one input file that generates one output file but we will allow the user to upload multiple files in one batch because Clam is a system that is very optimized for batch processing. You can upload large amounts of data and it will run in the background, possibly for hours, and then you can always come back later to inspect the results. Let's set uh, an ID for our first input template. We'll just call it input text. It is of the type plain text format. And here we set a label that users can understand. Input text. This is what actually will be shown in the interface. Um, all files in plain text format need to have an uh, associated parameter that specifies their encoding. In this case we have a static parameter so users cannot choose it and we just assume that it is UTF-8 encoded Unicode. We enforce that the extension of the input file is .text and we allow multiple files to be uploaded of this type. So instead of unique is true we set multi is true. Then we take a look at the output template that will be generated on the basis of this input template. We call it output text and this will be the text with all the vowels removed. So we call it output text without vowels. We set the encoding to the same as above. Um, we do not specify an extension or a file name. That means that it will just inherit the file name that the user uploaded for the input template. Here too we have to specify multi is true. So we have set up a profile. Now we set up what command Clam invokes when the user starts the, the web service. This is specified here. You specify a command and you can pass a series of predefined uh, parameters. There is the option to, uh, to write your wrapper script in Python or you can write it in whatever language you want. We are going to use the shell script variant here which is easiest. So we uncomment this. This is a template which is already generated and we will be editing it after we have edited this file. And we pass to this script four different parameters. First is the status file. The status file is a little text file that 
contains messages that will be forwarded from your wrapper script and your actual program to the interface. So the user can actually see feedback on the progress of your system. The input directories will contain all files uploaded by the user and the output directory will contain the files generated by your system. We pass them to your wrapper script here so the wrapper script knows where to read and where to write. The last parameter, parameters, is a, a collection of all parameters that the system may optionally take. These parameters are defined below in the parameters clause here. And we are going to add one little parameter for our system. Um, we are going to add a parameter that forces our system to only output lowercase if the user selects this parameter. Let's see. All parameters are grouped and groups can have titles, but we have only one parameter, so we just leave that empty. The parameter will be a Boolean parameter. Users can just click it on or it, it is off by default. All parameters need an ID, we'll just call this lowercase. All parameters need a name that uh, will be shown in the interface and a description what the actual parameter does. Convert everything to lowercase. Now these parameters are passed to the, to the command you specify here as part of these, this parameters variable and they are passed using a flag and you or an option flag and you can set that option flag here we say param flag is minus l for example that will pass the l flag to the script whenever the user selects this option in the interface this already concludes the service configuration file so we can write it to disk and we can continue with the so with the system wrapper script. Clam has generated two templates for the uh, system wrapper script, a Python template and a bash shell template. The Python template is actually more suitable and it's better for uh, bigger applications. It can do more complex stuff. Uh, the shell uh, implementation is only recommended for little uh, simple projects like ours. We will use the shell variant here. We already put the wrapper in the definition, in the command definition, in the service configuration file. And remember that in that definition we passed several parameters. We passed a status file, an input directory, an output directory, and uh, the remainder of, of the parameters from uh, our, for our system itself. Here in the system wrapper script we catch all of these uh, parameters. So the status file is a little file that has the messages in it that will be displayed in the interface. So the first thing we do here is we just output starting to this uh, status file. And each line just contains a little message that will be forwarded to the interface and will be logged and the user can see what's going on. Now the parameters parameter actually contains all the parameters that we have defined in our system. Remember we set the minus L flag for uh, converting the output to lowercase. So we have to catch that parameter here. We already have some example code to do this. So we un uncomment this example code and we add the L option first of all in this list. So get opt knows to look for the L option and then we add it here in the case statement and what we just do is we set lowercase is 1 if we got that parameter and if we didn't by default we set it to 0 so and later we will use this value to do our action based on the parameter um, so now we are going to loop over all the input files. Our input files are text files. The template already assumes this, so that's fine. We, we need not adapt this. This line grabs the, the file name, the base of the file name, and on the basis of that we can construct the output file. It is a full path in the output directory, which was passed as a parameter to this wrapper script. So that's already good as it is. Now the only thing we need to do here is to invoke our actual system. Well, 
as said, we're going to use set to remove the vowels. So we do our, our little substitute thing, which I showed in the beginning of the video. So this should be the substitute. It works on the input file and it outputs to the output file. This is it, but we haven't taken our parameter into account yet, our lowercase parameter. We want some different behavior if uh, lowercase is set to 1. So if lowercase equals 1 then we are going to do then we are going to do something different. Oh. Cuz then we need to lowercase the output and yeah, we can do using set, but I don't know how to do it by heart. I do know how to do it by heart in TR. So let's do the conversion from uppercase to lowercase in TR. Of course, these are just Unix command like line tools and this has nothing really to do with clam as such. So this is it. This should be the, the system wrapper script. It calls set and clam calls this wrapper script. And our service configuration pro uh, has the profile so uh, the system knows exactly what can go in and what can go out. Now the time has come to test everything. Now we can actually start clam using our service configuration file and there is already a script available for this. The start server development script will start the HTTP server uh, with which you can inspect the, the web application that you have just built. So we invoke this and it says that it is started on the host you specified. So now we grab our browser and we go to this specified URL. And here it is. This is the web application as well as the web service that has been generated uh, by Clamp. You see all the inf information from the service configuration file, the description, the title. Um, first of all, we are going to start a new project. Let's call it test project. Start project. Okay, this is the space where you can now uh, upload input files, in our case text documents, and select parameters, in our case the lowercase parameter. Let's uh, add a little input file. Uh, we can do so from disk or we can type it directly in our browser, which we will do here for simplicity. We indicate the input type of the text, which is an input text. This corresponds to the input template in our service configuration file. So you can have multiple input types and the user can select which one he wants to upload. We'll just go with our standard text, hello world, desired file name, tests the extension will be added automatically we say add to input files and here you see it we have the input file uploaded to our project space next we can uh, select parameters we only have one parameter do we want everything in lowercase let's do so we check it and we start the system by pressing the big start button the system starts it gives an update on its status whilst it was running, but it's done very quickly in this case. You see the, the starting output and the done output, which has been written to the, to the status file in our, in, in our wrapper script. And then here we see all the output files generated. There's always an error log, which contains the standard error output, so you can inspect it and see exactly how the system has uh, performed. And there is the output file according to the output template, which is the output text without vowels. So we can click this file, and as you see, it is indeed the expected output. So this demonstrates the, the web uh, application, and it shows how easy it is to wrap your own command line tool into and form it into a fully fledged web application. The last thing I want to show still is the RESTful web service specification of the web service. Right now we have connected using the 
a web user interface, which is good for end users, but automated clients communicate in a different way. If you go to the info page, which is available for every CLAM web service, then you can read the specification of how your automated client can communicate with CLAM. So here you see how to create a project, how to upload files, how to start your project with specified parameters, and how to regularly pull the project to see whether it is finished and then at the end you can retrieve the desired output files all in a similar fashion as we have done in the browser now. The bottom of the info page also shows an example client written in Python using the Clam API and you can use this to get started uh, with writing a client for your own service. A generic Clam client is also available which you can use to communicate with any CLAM web service. For example, let's connect to our web service and get the list of all projects. Um, that is done by the projects command. Also, we can get the actual status of the project we were just doing, the test project. So here you see the input files and output files, and you can download the files using this application as well. This concludes our CLAM tutorial. We have seen how to build a simple uh, web service and web application uh, around a command line tool. There are uh, many more possibilities in CLAM, and I recommend you to check out the documenta documentation, which you can reach through the CLAM website which is proikongithub.io slash clamp.